My name is Eric Strebel. Welcome to another video of mine about industrial design. In this video, we're going to take a look at casting urethane Joby hot shoe camera mount. Uh, that's from my Gorillapod, so I can use it on other things like my tripod and my rovers and different video adapters uh, in my studio. I'm using Innovative Polymers, i.e. 3076 urethane two-part resin here. It is a fantastic all-around, uh, very durable resin. I use it for all my general purpose casting. Uh, there's really no need to uh, go out and get any other kind of resin. This stuff is fantastic. It is strong, durable. Uh, you can put it in a vacuum tank, suck all the bubbles out of it. You can add color to it. It is durable, easy to mix, fantastic stuff. I highly recommend it. Now when you're casting uh, urethane resin, <clears throat> You should get yourself a scale so that you can accurately measure the two components to the correct ratio and getting yourself a kitchen timer so that you can keep track of how much time you spend mixing uh, and working your resin is absolutely essential because ultimately the resin has to go into a vacuum tank to be degassed uh, before you put it into your pressure pot uh, to squeeze down whatever bubbles that are left if you're using such a uh, setup. Here I'm just putting the resin into my vacuum tank and we're going to draw uh, vacuum on it and we'll see it bubble up here shortly as we draw the air out so we get a bubble free cast part. You can see I'm keeping track um, and I always have that timer with me so I know exactly how long it's been since I mixed those two resins together because I know I only have about a 14 to 17 minute uh, pot life before that stuff is just too thick and I can't work it anymore. One of the reasons that I like the 3076 is that it has a fairly long pot life of about 14 to 17 minutes. This makes it ideal for casting um, it gives me plenty of time to mix up my resin, uh, add a colorant if I need to do that, and then put it in the vacuum tank. Um, so I don't have to worry about some stuff kicking off in three to five minutes, and I'm just pulling my hair out because I can't get apart. This gives me plenty of time. Um, just another reason that I like this stuff. Now, for demonstration purposes of this video, I'm actually pouring this resin out of this cup into my mold, into that little hole. That is not the way I normally would cast a part. And I'm gonna show you how I normally cast a part here because the stuff is starting to set up and I'm getting worried because the uh, stuff is not flowing out the vent holes yet. So I'm gonna get a syringe and I'm gonna suck up some of that silicone. I'm not getting any air in there because I've already degassed it keeping it all in the system and I'm basically injecting that uh, resin into my uh, two-part silicone mold. Very much the same thing that would happen if you were injection molding a plastic part. That is why they call it injection molding and so that's in essence what we're doing. We're injecting the resin at uh, high pressure uh, into that silicone two-part mold. Now it goes into my uh, pressure pot, close the lid, and we're going to put about 60 PSI of pressure on this thing. If there are any bubbles left in that part, they will get crushed down to microscopic size. I also have the ability to add some heat in my uh, pressure pot. Resins tend to like heat particularly uh, urethane resins. Now you'll have to check with your manufacturer uh, in this case, the Innovative Polymers Resin, if you can add about 100, 110 degrees uh, of heat to your part, uh, this will allow thin walled or thin film parts to cure uh, at a little bit higher rate. Uh, you will, can get them out of the mold in a couple of hours uh, with this additional heat. Otherwise, it may take overnight. Um, after about 20 minutes, it's in the tank, and I wait for it to cure. 
A couple hours later, I let the air back into the tank and we take the part out for demolding. Let's take the two halves of the silicone mold apart, just carefully, nice and gentle, pry it apart. We have some undercuts to deal with. We don't want to rip the silicone, but if you're gentle, you can get uh, dozens and dozens of parts out of a mold like this. You'll see, there's where we pour the resin in. It's gonna be easy to snap those pieces off and clean them and trim them. Here's some other parts that I made, black, white, blue, semi-translucent. Um, you can add whatever pigment you want. The material is uh, very, very accepting of tints and colorant. One last shot of a bubble-free perfect part. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel below. You can also follow me on Twitter where I'm tweeting about products on this planet and different projects that I'm working on. You can also go to the Botson website and sign up for the newsletter and get occasional updates about the different projects that I'm working on. Feel free to share this video on your favorite social media site and let your friends know about it. Rock on!